Yeah. yeah better. Perfect. A lot better. Is that we're good, bro? All right, so <laughs> welcome back to the most authentic, most organic podcast out there right now. Atos Alive Podcast. Let's go! Let's go! I'm excited to be here. We're honestly, I'm super excited and blessed to have a very powerful individual, motivated individual that titles we just said it right now. Your <laughs> mother, your entrepreneur, a trainer a bodybuilder competitor vegan. and vegan, vegan completely vegan. vegan yes but we have Gabriela in the house let's Ooh. go thank you guys so uh, much for having me so let's let's just kick it off with how was your first bodybuilding experience oh my goodness it was definitely mind and life-changing mm. um bodybuilding and competing is definitely a obviously a competitive sport it's right. very like me 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 type of thing which is true you know it's all about like you know getting in your food getting in your workouts like it's it's a selfish sport for sure um I didn't experience it like that of course there's times where you do have to be selfish yeah. but this competition really made me like change differently but in, selfish in like what way selfish in a sense where you have a goal to get to and you don't care how you'll get it like mm. having to wake up a little bit earlier or leaving a party a little bit earlier because you're like damn i gotta go to the gym in the morning um not being able to like go out with your friends and like right. drink or you know going to a restaurant to get your own food <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah that's um, crazy selfish in a sense where you really have to put your head in a different spot where everyone else is. Cause it's like, this is go time. This is grind time. This is where I have to like Definitely. really accomplish something that I really want. And I feel like it kind of goes hand in hand with life in general, right? You want to get somewhere, you want to go somewhere and just grinding it out, trying to get, you know, be successful. I really feel like it goes hand in hand in life. So sometimes. what's your definition on success? Success for me is being financially free mm -hmm. and being able to be like my own boss. That's my version of success for yeah. sure. I every time like in the morning I, I see you guys post, I'm like, damn, they're there four or five in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Early. Early. Was it a difference on making time for your training now that I know you train pretty much every day, but getting into this competition was it a different type of level that you had to turn it up? For sure, yeah. Um, just because the level of energy that you have is almost, like, non-existent <laughs> sometimes. You really don't feel like going in the gym, and you have to, like, crank it up a notch for sure. What about those days that you didn't want to go? Like, you finished with your last client, mm -hmm. and you haven't trained, and you know you got to do, what is it, 30 minutes of cardio? 30, 40, 40 minutes? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, no, non-existent. Yeah. I'm on a 10 for 10. That's <laughs> it. I'm good. Maybe if we're good. But those times. So I think we all go through those moments that we're just, we're just fucking tired. Yeah. We go through the whole day's work. Mm -hmm. We help others. And when it comes down to having us time, right. we still got to work. Exactly. So how, for you, during that process and that journey of, how long were you in prep for? So I was on prep for three months. Yeah. Jesus like Christ. Like 13 weeks. So like three months in a week. Yeah. Oh my God. So those days, those days you didn't want to get up. <laughs> you didn't want to go train. You wanted to go to sleep, rest. Yeah. Spend time with your, with your loved one and your yes. kiddos. How was that? Like, what's that thought process? I just really wanted to make that promise to myself and I wanted to keep that promise. Like for years I've been wanting to do this show and I've always been holding it off. Yeah. And that little promise in the back of my head was like no don't quit on yourself because that was my biggest issue for years was I was not confident enough to like really believe that I could do this and um actually Rodrigo was a big factor in my motivation That's she's dope. like babe you got this Rodrigo's my boyfriend by the way shout out <laughs> Rodrigo <laughs> he's over here right now um really like the biggest motivation for me to you know just doing this for myself yeah. but you know it's it's an experience that I really wanted to to have under under my life you know just being able to really make that promise to myself like no, you, yes you're tired yes 
you know, you feel like shit right now, but it's all going to be worth it. And it definitely was for sure. I think that you hold up, how you said, you hold a promise to yourself. And I think that's the easiest thing to ever break is when you oh, make yeah. a promise to yourself is putting an excuse like, oh, I could do it later. Mm-hmm. Oh, tomorrow's a new day. I'll make it up tomorrow. So instead of doing 40 minutes today, I could do an hour tomorrow and I'll make it up. But people don't understand like, yo, you're one day backtracked already. Like, yeah. You skip the day. Mm-hmm. And the other person that is your competition is working that exactly. day. Exactly. So I know he did a competition too, right? Yes. You're, he's completely vegan also, right? Yeah. Vegan. Is that good? Like, so, so we had a, <laughs> I'm going to shout out my boy Ike. Literally, we're on TikTok Live earlier. So he had a question for that. And he said, where is this at? The foods. The food. So do you get the same energy being completely vegan than being non-vegan? No. We get, I feel like it's better, low-key. Mm. I'm definitely going to hype up the vegan community right now. Shout out the vegan community. <laughs> What's up, guys? Um, yeah, I feel like it's a lot better, if I'm being honest. Um, in comparison to how I felt before eating meat and things like that and animal byproducts, I felt like almost sluggish sometimes. I felt very, like, tired, fatigued oily i don't know if like that makes sense like we always use that description like i just feel oily like everywhere but being on prep i actually didn't feel too too bad there were days where i felt like a little you know tired but um i feel like eating ve- like being vegan yeah we have so many more like um not restrictions i feel like we have a lot of redirection in our food right So direct redirection into like healthier options or like wanting to try different things. Like I would have never tried a jackfruit before. Like what the hell is a jackfruit? No idea. But it's bomb. Like it's the best, best ever. You definitely go try it. Um, Energy wise, for sure. I feel like we have pretty good energy all around. So what what's the like your your schedule look like? What time you get up? Okay, so take us through a day of Gabriela. (laughs) Okay, so. Currently, I've actually been getting up at 3 a.m. because um, I have a client at 4 a.m. So beautiful mom. I'm going to shout her out. Her name's Chanel. I love her so much. She is on the grind right now. She's trying to, you know, lose the baby weight and she's got a birthday coming up in May. So I'm like super proud of her. I said yes to training her at 4 a.m. just because I remember when I had just had my baby I was getting up at 4 a.m. to go train because literally it was the only time that I had to be able to like work out and work on myself because why? You're a mom and you you work, so pretty much the whole day is not yours, unfortunately. That's just the reality of motherhood. Um, your days don't belong to you as much anymore as you would hope to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, it doesn't. No, and I'm sure, you know, your girlfriend could understand. You guys have two kids, correct? Two kids, yes. yeah, I'm done. Congratulations, thank by you, the way. Thank yes, you, yeah. I know we're done too. Well, I'm I, done too. I wrapped it maybe. up. I don't know. Um, But, yeah, so Chanel is an amazing woman. She's working hard. She's grinding it out. Um, So I go in at 4 a.m. to go train her, and then I'm pretty much training all morning, and then I go and work out. Sometimes I go and work out with Rodrigo, and then um, I'll pick the babies up from school, and then that's when I'm kind of, like, doing back-end things like that. So on the computer or just... Social get, media. Yeah, social media. Because, honestly, that's a, f- as you know, almost that, like a full-time job, that too. That is a full-time job. Yeah. Um, shining some light, what place did you get on your competition? So I placed second in the open division, and then I placed third in my class. Okay. We're, we're going to. We're going to. We're Thank going to. Thank you. Thank I was you so much. Literally, your your first comp. My first show, yeah. And you literally, I mean, you get you were on stage and you place like how everybody thinks one, two, and three. Like those are the ones everybody looks at. Right. But for the first time, competing with other people that have been competing for a while, mm-hmm. maybe the first time, maybe their second or third. But you stepped on there and you you fucking killed it. Thank you. Right. So. Right. The thing you hear about the podcast is, it's not my phrase, but I'm taking it from uh, somebody else. It says, giving you the flowers. Mm-hmm. Giving yourself that pat on the back. Like, yo, I've been doing all this shit, and I haven't even thanked myself for it. Right? Like, we, wow. do the, we do the podcast, and we do a lot, of, and they tell me, they remind me, yo, like, you're, I'm like, nah, wow. it's not me yet. Right? Like, right. I, don't, I don't feel like I've done enough yeah. for you. Have you sat back at one point in your life? Uh, during the day, during the week, mm-hmm. 
and just kind of looked at everything you have done and accomplished up until, like, say, today? Wow. You know what? Yeah, I have. And, and it's actually not because I wanted to do it. It was because Rodrigo actually made me sit there and really understand, like, a lot that I've done. Yeah. Because, like, we're our, like, hardest critics, right? We are. It takes someone else, like, what you just said to me, like, hey, like, what have you done? Like, have you really thought to think, like, what you have done? And, yeah, Rodrigo is definitely someone that has made me almost, like, sit and be like, babe, like, look what you've done. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys have had criers on this show, but I'll probably cry. I'm really emotional. <laughs> Did I? I think I almost cried, cried one. Yeah. Who was it with? Yeah. Was it with you? Oh, with Ale. Yeah. Shout out. With Ale. Alan? No, uh, Alejandra. Oh, she Alejandra. has a body sculpting business. And we we're talking about family. I think nice. that's always a sensitive subject. Yeah. Um, but yeah, giving yourself the flowers. You're a mother of two. Yes. Motherhood. Motherhood. How old are your kids, if you don't mind us asking? Ezra is about to be eight next week, and then Mila just turned five in November. So you've been you've been in the parenting game for for a long time, a long time, for a while. How has that changed you? Because I think the community that you have behind you is not just women empowerment, mm -hmm. but it's mother empowerment. Right. It's mothers who are really doing it, mm -hmm. doing what they're not supposed to do. Yeah. They're not in the following the rules or following mm -hmm. the guidelines of what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. For you, how has being a mother changed you for your community that's going to watch you and, and learn this from you? Being a mom definitely has opened a lot more doors, opened a lot more of my community, just as far as not just fitness girls, but like moms who are really trying to like better themselves. Um, I really feel like I can relate to these women a lot because I've been there before. I was a hundred and like seventy pounds at one time, and the, obviously from babies, due to having babies and stress and not having the mindset to work on myself. Because you know, in motherhood, you're only supposed to be a mom. When you when you're a mom, like that's it. You're that's only it. supposed to be a mom, right? Which is so so wrong. <laughs> you sh you know, you're able to be a mom, be an entrepreneur, be a boss, you know. Be whatever you want to be. Exactly. And I want to show that to my daughter, too. Um, show that to my son, you know, like, find a good, strong woman that's able to do it all, right? Yeah. Um, I definitely feel like being a mom has helped me just connect with these women a lot more. I understand their struggles because I go through it, too, you know. Um, We've all been there. We've all been... Uh how do I say it? Kind of victims of society, of what our older generation has told us how yeah. to be. You need to be this type of parent. You need to only do this. And, like, I don't know if you've ever, like, the clients that you have, the older ones, old generation, if you ever ask them, like, hey, like, what are you doing right now? What is this what you always wanted to be? Yeah. Is this what you always thought? No, I always wanted to do something different. So it's like, yo, I don't want to have that story. Exactly. Respects to them because, right. you know, I think – Back then, it was it was a different time. Right now, it is easier because we have the platforms, jobs, yeah. everything. So it's super easy to right. get a job and do something positive. But it's that the thing that I feel that separates us is the doers. Are you exactly. ready to go through whatever is, is going to come in that road? <laughs> yeah. And for you, being a mother of two, what point in your life did you were like, I can't be doing this? Like you're... What did Steve Harvey say? Your turn back moment. My turn back moment. <clears throat> I think it was actually kind of recently. Um, I want to say it was the summer of 2020 was the worst summer of my life. Talk about this. Oh, my goodness. Exciting. There we go. Um, I <laughs> lost a lot of, like, family and a lot of friends in that summer. Um, it was the turning point where I just – finally needed to make the decisions for myself and a lot of my family weren't like happy about that um just wanting to you know separate myself from certain family members just because I felt like it was toxic for my own life and for my kids life and um you know I feel like because I wanted to be a little bit selfish with my own like spirit and my own soul yeah a lot of people didn't like that Ugh. 
and no one likes it right <laughs> <laughs> no one likes it nobody likes you working on yourself apparently um but that was my turning point because I really needed to make the decision whether or not like I wanted to be successful in life or not with or without my family with or without like certain friends um and yeah that was my turning point where I was like all right I'm gonna do this so I decided to be a trainer and a year later I went to UFC I started my um training there and then I took a bet on myself like three months later after I was at UFC I was like you know what I could do this on my own yeah and Three months later, I took a bet on myself, and I wor- started working at Self Made, and here we are. The rest is history. Yeah, I felt like it kind of skyrocketed written, from there. Still being written, though. Yes, still being written right? for sure. Um, so, what you just said right now, you had to cut out family, friends. Mm-hmm. That transition, that moment, that honestly, a lot of people used to be me for sure is trying to please others. We stay in that same circle. Even if it's, like, toxic, why? Because, oh, um, I don't have any other friends. Right. Did you ever find yourself being alone when you made that transition? 100%. So how does that feel, being alone? Like, again, this is, what happens during this podcast is everything that we say right now, and people are either watching it on YouTube, if you haven't, go subscribe, Um, listening (laughs) on Spotify or Apple. So people are hearing this, hearing you talk, and they're looking for an answer that they've been wanting to find. Because it's a moment in their life that you're just like, fuck, man, I'm going through this. And literally from what we've gotten into the podcast and other people, the guests that we've had, they always tell us, yo, somebody was listening to what the podcast and they told me they did this because they heard wow. it. Wow, that's powerful. So I think what you just said right now, we've all gone through it. Yeah. So what would be for everybody watching you and listening to you that like, hmm, a phrase or a word that you would, like, if they came to ask you, yo, how did you do it? Because that's tough. It is tough. And I'm, like, put on the spot right now because, damn, I don't even know how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know, like, I don't even know what I did to do it. But I just know, like, I felt alone, but I knew I wasn't going to be alone for any longer. If I really do this, if I really put myself around amazing people and um, like-minded people, you know, people with the same goals, people with the same drive, for sure. Um, I had literally Rodrigo and, like, two of my other girlfriends, and that was it. That's all you need. And that's all I need. There's that comedian said, all you need is three motherfuckers, (laughs) and you can take over a whole country. (laughs) That's all you need. That's so funny. Yeah, because, like, what we we do in the podcast, it's, it's us. We're missing one more. Jose, when he shows up. Um, and it's just that, like, we go from, like, let's take it back to high school, and you know, everybody knows you, mm-hmm. everybody knows your name, everybody knows you, they say hi to you, this, 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 yeah. at the end of the day, when shit gets tough, who is literally around you? Right. Nobody. Nobody. No one's answering you, no one's like, oh, I'll see you later, this, this, and that, and then we found each other, and now it's like, all right, what do we got to go through? Fuck it, run right. it. Let's all do it together. Exactly. And then when we, I ran into that video, I sent it to them. I did a little video of us on TikTok, and it's on, like, all you need is three motherfuckers. Yeah. Obviously, if you have more friends. Like, right. we, we got more friends. Yeah. But, yeah, but at least three. <laughs> at least three that, yeah. like, at the end of the day, like, we're, we don't need you for your money. We don't need you mm-hmm. for your possessions. Yeah. Or we just need, like, your energy. Exactly. Your vibe. So was that a transition Support. for, like, friend groups? Oh, yeah, for sure. My friend group definitely made a switch. Are they all vegan? No. Okay. <laughs> I have I some non-vegan one. friends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but they like vegan food. We always go eat vegan food. I'm grateful for that. Um, huh? Oh, Cafe Gratitude. Oh, that's the best. Babe, it's right here. Literally. Okay. Wherever you park, all you got to do is just walk. <laughs> Damn. Okay, I kind of want to go eat there. Okay, anyways. Um... I really like what Rodrigo and I say is like we keep our circle very small. And the reason being is because we want to go far in life, right? And you're you're right. You just need three motherfuckers. (laughs) 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 And that's kind of how it is recently. Like we just kind of keep our circle small and we're just focused on like building right now. It's transitions. Like you go through, obviously, like we see Rodrigo doing his thing on training. If 
You need an app for a training facility? Yes. There, my man it's over here is doing it right now. Go on the Playbook app called Relief. Go check it out. It's the best. We're going to link it, definitely. Um, <laughs> but when you do something that's out of the ordinary, you became a trainer at Southman. Mm-hmm. You took a chance to even became a trainer at UFC. Um, starting the app, doing podcasts, doing something out of the ordinary. Yeah. You tend, those people that don't want to see you tend to just by themselves. Falling off. Yeah. And then you sense the energy, right? Mm-hmm. Like you walk into the room, it's like, all right, what energy is in there? Yeah. Everybody's embracing each other or are you getting malas caras? Yeah. Are people turning away from you? And then when you leave, We're what are they sour. saying about uh-huh. you? Exactly. Petty. Petty. People want you to do good, just not better than them, right? They don't want you to outgrow them or, you know, how you said, get better yeah. than them. Exactly. So <laughs> there was a, a moment this week, I asked one of the girls at the gym, we all been through petty shit. Right. I was very petty. Now I'm like, ah, I'm chilling. Let me laugh. <laughs> drink my drink my happy dad. Your happy dad. <laughs> um, is there a, a moment, and this is probably just for shits and giggles, that you were like super petty? Oh yeah, I feel like as <laughs> yeah, I'm like yesterday, Fuck, just last night. No. <laughs> for sure, I feel like we all kind of like go through that especially as women I will, I'll speak for women sometimes like I was definitely like a very insecure woman at one point in my life and I felt like almost envious or like petty that these women were chasing after what they wanted or like they had a like better bod you know what I mean like yeah and I'm looking at the only girl in here and we're both like mm-hmm, yeah <laughs> <laughs> it happens you know like I feel like that kind of goes away when you start just being laser focused on you and only you. And I really feel like that's kind of what happened when I did my show. Um, I was a little nervous, you know, doing this show. And, like, I just thought, like, girls would be petty and, like, backstage or something. And that was, like, the total opposite is because we were all laser focused on what? On ourselves. So I felt like it was an amazing moment for myself to be like, wow, like really being laser focused on doing you and only you makes you such a better person. One for your confidence, but two for other women. I felt like I was so empowered back there. All these women just hyping me up like, damn, you're vegan. Oh my God, you look great. And we're just going back and forth. And I feel like that pettiness goes away when you really are just focused on building yourself and building that confidence within yourself because I've never felt so damn confident up there in a freaking bikini after having two kids. It was a it was mind blowing to me. Yeah, honestly. like I seen like Jason post you and then like I mean just a journey, right? Because when you piggyback what you just said, when you walk with confidence, like your energy and what you bring, like you could just tell as soon as you walk in, wherever you walk in. You can walk into a restaurant, you can walk into a gym, mm-hmm. it's like the energy and the confidence is like, yo, yeah, that's that's a real, that's <laughs> real right there. That's a real motherfucker. Yeah, that's a real motherfucker right there. So with the confidence, <laughs> both of you guys are in the gym community, big mm-hmm. guys and girls in there. Yes. At one, was there any point? Sorry, I'm gonna do this. But go ahead, no filter, <laughs> uh, no filter. Um, jealousy, because there's girls around your dude mm-hmm. or guys around you or. I guess you could say jealousy. I think it was more of like a self-conscious thing because I wasn't as confident. So being around beautiful women, you know, beautiful people in general, I feel like you can get intimidated, right? Yeah. Um, Definitely, I've been there before. I'm not going to even... Was that a fight on site? Oh, no, 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 no. (laughs) No, not with the girls. No, (laughs) no, no. (laughs) She was like, like, hold my headphones. I'll be back. (laughs) Doing one twos over here. No. (laughs) Just a five pound just throwing. (laughs) It was a fight within myself. Um, Big fight within myself. And not to say like I'm like hot shit now. I'm not saying that at all. I think I really had to make that decision to like really work on myself so that I don't feel like that anymore. That I don't feel intimidated when another beautiful like person walks into a room because I feel like sometimes as women, and I'm, t- I'm speaking to women too because we get it, women sometimes will make another woman smaller so that we can be, so we can feel bigger. I'll say that again. 
women will make other women smaller so that we can feel bigger in our own ego. And that is such a like shitty thing to do because I feel like as women, like we struggle with so many things, moms, especially, I don't know if this other woman that's walking into a gym is a mom or not. And whether or not like she is like, I should still have like the compassion for her or still feel the need to empower her because I want to feel that from other women too. I think that's, that's the biggest thing is one walking in with an open mind and not judging a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. I mean, depending on the person, cause there's some people that are just acting out. Acting right. Foolish, right. Of course. Use your discretion. <laughs> yes. Use your discretion. <laughs> but to the point, And I, I think now for sure with, with us, with the whole thing that we're doing is when someone lashes out at you, says something bad about you, does something. First reaction is like, oh, fuck that. Start talking shit <laughs> and now nah, fuck that fool, fuck, whatever it is. Yeah. Now it's different. Now it's, man, I wonder what, what's happening. Exactly. Maybe he's not getting the love. Maybe he doesn't have the support. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, he's going through something, right. but can't be mad at him. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Dylan, are you hurting right now? <laughs> <laughs> he felt that one. <laughs> Hurt girl, people girl hurt people. And so that's exactly what kind of mindset that I feel like we should have. Like, okay, well, what's going on in there? Like, yeah. what's going on with you that you feel the need to hurt somebody else? So do you think you guys as trainers, you're basically therapists also? In a sense? In a sense, sometimes. I feel like a lot of these people come in just for the workouts. I know some of them are not, like, on their meal plans or whatever. They're not as serious, but they come in. And they just, like, release, you know, the workout's great, you know, endorphins are going crazy up in there, but they're also just kind of, like, just letting things go. It's as, like barbershops. You're right. Why do we go get a cut? <laughs> Sometimes our barber knows a yes. lot more. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at Rodrigo because <laughs> literally every time he gets a haircut, he's like, babe, I talked to Manny, and oh, my God, it was such an amazing conversation. <laughs> right? Sometimes you have the best conversation with, with your barber. Yeah. And it's just, like, you look, you look at him. And you leave there and be like, damn, I almost cried with them. <laughs> I just opened up. Yeah. And same thing with them. They like opened up to us. And I feel like sometimes that instead of, I mean, everybody has their own view. And I encourage everybody to do their whatever helps them best. But us as guys, we don't, I feel like I don't, I will never go to a therapist. Mm. But the people that I have around me right. are my therapist, right. my barber, my friends. friends. Like I was talking about, I was like, dude, like. I would never go, but that's why we have the podcast. Because after this, we talked a lot of shit. We did everything, <laughs> and then I'm good. Right. Then whatever battles I got to go through the week, whatever demons I got to dance with and fight with, <laughs> I do it again. And then the following yeah. weekend, I'm ready to fucking rock and roll. Exactly. So dance with the demons. Do you dance with your demons? Do you put them away, lock Oof. them in the closet? This is maybe where I'm going to start crying. So Please do. Apologize I'm ready to, in advance. I'm ready to cry, too. I mean, we've been waiting <laughs> gotta, all week to cry. We're good. Let me take a little sippy sip real quick. Hold on. Fuck. Let me take tequila. <laughs> I can't do tequila. I'm good. There's I have a, really bad memories on tequila. I have bad memories on Ciroc. Ciroc. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. I just have bad memories with alcohol. It's never, it's never Jason, good last week, he... Said vodka, so I was like, I got a vodka. And we didn't even touch the vodka. That was crazy. <laughs> but he was excited to take it home. I think him and his, him and his wife shared it. I'll uh, pretend to take a shot. I'll take that cup. I'll pretend. Oh, it's okay. I am pretending. I'm gonna throw it in. <laughs> we got that. Um, all right, all so right. before it's we... It's going to get real, guys. Yeah, before we dance with the demons right now, bring them out of the closet... A toast? A toast. So a great episode. If yes. you haven't, go subscribe already. Ooh. <laughs> Jesus. Maybe after last night we should have Lord done this. Jesus. All right, let's go. <clears throat> so, what was the question? The demons. <laughs> Your demons. Um, I think we all struggle with fighting with them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they get the best of us. Yeah. Sometimes they win. And it puts us back in a deep, deep circle, deep hole that we figure like, yo, I can't get out of this. Mm -hmm. You're going through the motion and you put on a, your happy face. And when you leave, sit in your car, you're going home, you're just like, fuck. Yeah. You wake up, you're just like, fuck. When was that for you? 
it was literally right before I started prep, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I've been dealing, like I mentioned, 2020 was probably like the worst year of my life. Um, and ever since, I've been battling with um, depression. Obviously, a lot of people don't know that because, you know, you just, like you said, just got to put, on that, happy put on that happy face and just Lord. go to work, be a mom, be a friend, be a trainer, be a girlfriend. Like you just got to, you just got to go. Like, time's moving. You can't just sit there. And do nothing. Exactly. Um, so definitely right before prep, actually, it was a really, really rough time I was battling with those demons. Um, I used prep as a way to try to control some part of my life because I felt like my life was just mm -hmm. everywhere yeah. and it was uncontrollable. So I was like, what can I do to take control? Like, what can I do to like really hold on to one part of my life where I have control of every single moment? And I actually used prep as a yeah. way to, to feel a little bit more sane have a little bit more sanity in life. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. I'm, I'm very, honestly, when someone is open enough and confident enough to share what they're going through, that's a bad motherfucker. Hell yeah. Tough motherfucker. <laughs> Why? Because I, to me, it's you, you're going to know everything I go through. Mm -hmm. And social media is obviously a big, big platform. You right. only show what you want. We're very transparent since we started this podcast, and I always tell everybody, we went through depression, went through suicide, went suicide attempt, did this, this. There's nobody in this world that can say anything about me that I haven't said myself. Right. Do I go through depression as a man? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Do I cry? Yes, I do. But do I get up every fucking day to go to oh, work? Yeah. Yes, I fucking yes, do. Yes, you do. Do we not? <sighs> Got to. Better okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> it's a battle every day. I feel like... Yeah, exactly. You you do. People with your count stuff. on us. Yeah. You know, I want to shine light. Being being a mother. Thank you. Being a mother, you got to get up. Right. The kids count on you. Yeah. Whether Everybody I'm sad else. or not, like it doesn't matter. You just got to get up. Did you, have you ever talked to your kids? And this is just because I was talking to Jason last time. I did it. Um. Just take a look at them and be like, "Yo, this is gonna pay off." Absolutely. A hundred percent. I always, when I feel like I'm having a moment, I just need to like take a step back and really look at my life to like, who's the core of my life? Yeah. What's more important? And like my babies, my babies are important. And so like this sadness that I'm dealing with, yes, it's important to deal with it, but it's important to deal with it because I want them to have a, an amazing life. So what's the, what's the secret to keep on going. Don't ignore the sadness. I feel like I was doing that for a while. Just putting it away, pushing it to the side, really trying to just be like a tough bitch about it, you know? <laughs> I mean, I'm a bad motherfucker, but, you know. <laughs> We're bad bitches. <laughs> Bad motherfucker. Bad motherfucker, honestly. Yes. <laughs> it's like the theme of this this podcast. Um, the secret, don't ignore it. Don't ignore your sadness. Don't push it away. I feel like it makes it a lot worse. Um, I have been going to therapy. I'm very um, open about that, even with my own clients, you know, just letting them know, like, yeah, therapy was really great. It was great. Yeah. Um, a lot of childhood trauma there that I've been actually dealing with for the past year now. Um, that I didn't even know that was there, uh, really put an effect on like my anxiety and my depression. A lot of, um, our anxiety and depression as, you know, people that have gone through childhood trauma, like that, yeah. that happens. I it, did not know that. It's that, it's the, um, figuratively, it's that anchor. Mm -hmm. Anchor on a boat. Yeah. You're trying to go on a fucking cruise around yeah. the world and you really can't. Or you're going, but not moving as fast as you should. Right. Why? Because that anchor is just exactly. there. Exactly. And until yeah. you bring it to light and be like, all right, why am I fucked up? <laughs> why are these fucking demons <laughs> coming back so often? What the fuck is it's going on? It's because you really have to, like, face face it. Like, yeah, you do. You gotta, no other option. You got to put up the two-piece. <laughs> you got to put your knuckles up, and you got to mm -hmm. go fight. Exactly. 
And so that's my biggest advice for anybody dealing with depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts. Definitely, I've been there too. Um, you know, just it wasn't like even six months ago, I felt like I did not want to be here anymore. It's an and easier route. Yeah. It, easier you, route. You I, feel like it. That's Yeah, uh, literally, that's, uh, I was telling, uh, I was just telling my mom, we're having a conversation yesterday. It's very rare when we have those type of conversations, but mm-hmm. I was like, it's always easy. But then you think, who's counting on me? Right. Who's looking, like, who's waiting for me to do something to help them? Mm-hmm. And throughout this podcast, like, the people we encountered, people we reached now, TikTok is amazing. If you're not on TikTok, go on TikTok <laughs> right now. That's all it is. You got to go. But the reach, and literally even yesterday when I was at my, uh, my friend's party, they're pretty much, they watch it, and they're like, yo, like, I watch, like, I've been watching your shit, man. Like, I've, yeah. I've been, it really has been helping yeah. And it's just that, like, when we watch Steve Harvey, when we watch, uh, for me, Eric Thomas, mm-hmm. when we watch all these big stars, and they say one thing, right? and that it's one nice. thing that they say, yo, I knew this already. Right. I just needed to hear it from somebody yeah. else. 100%. So when you're so open about everything that you're going, going through, again, that's, that's a bad motherfucker. Bad motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> because, Thank you, man. Because of that. Because they're, you're battling whatever you're battling, yet you're still getting up. Four in the morning, three in the morning, go to work. You're still training. You're still putting, being a great mom. You're still doing social media. You're still working. And then you're still working the relationship. Yeah. You're, do you believe there's a balance? I yes. asked Alan, if you listen, I asked Alan. Yeah. I asked Jason, which that episode comes out tomorrow. Right. And now I'm going to ask you, do you believe there's a balance? I believe there's a balance. You could do it. You just really have to not make, like, excuses for yourself not to. There's there's a balance, for sure. You have to make certain things in life as a priority. Um, some things do have to go, unfortunately. You know, when you're trying to build the business and you're trying to work in the relationship and be a mom, like, I don't have as much time to, like, do all these crazy things like I used to, yeah. but it's now because, like, well, my priorities are shifted now, and this is my balance. Yeah. These four mm-hmm. things in life are my balance. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I think we try to, um, what did our parents say? El que mucho embarca, poco, something like that. Some shit like that, right? <laughs> like, Everyone's all these, like, what? All these phrases, <laughs> there's, like, a lot of these phrases that, like, my mom used to tell me, it's like, el que mucho embarca, like, poco puede rendir. So you're going to say yes to all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I could yeah. do it. And then everything comes. You're just right. like, fuck. Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Stressed. Yeah. So there is a balance. And, like, you definitely have to choose what you're trying to balance. So you can say no to certain things. But you just got to be <laughs> gotta be priority, right? Yeah. What are you, What is you, you're trying to balance out? Facts. Work. School. If you're in school relationships, kids, your own fitness, your own health, your own mental health. I was taking literally a day out of the week and I said no to clients. I said, I'm not training on these days because I need to think about myself and I need to think about my mental health, which was why I was going to therapy on certain days of the week. Hey, you have to do what's best for you. Yes. No matter if anybody else likes it. Why? Because no one wakes up and puts on your own shoes. Exactly. Literally. No one's going to do it for you. You just got to get up and do it and be a bad motherfucker. <laughs> we're going to title this shit. <laughs> Honestly, I'm kind of done. I'm kind of Watch, done. Uh, throughout the day, we're all going to just be sitting there. We're bad motherfuckers. You know? <laughs> we're going to be at the gym. Bad motherfucker. Bad motherfucker right here. <laughs> so for everybody watching, I'm very curious. Your ethnicity. Because I see your eyes. So we're all curious. I'm curious. I'm Colombian and I'm Mexican. Oh, you guys went to a trip, right? We went to Costa Rica. Yeah, we uh, went to Costa Rica. We're trying to go to Colombia within, like, the next two years to go some, visit some family. Bring yeah. back some Pablo Escobar. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm Colombian and Mexican. Um, I speak very minimal Spanish. My uh, dad speaks Spanish, but I speak very little Spanish. My mom doesn't really? speak Spanish. I lived with my mom for... Um, pretty much my whole life but yeah I speak very minimal I understand it I just don't know how to like have a full-on conversation and I'm the worst Colombian ever <laughs> but I'm very I'm very proud of my culture I'm very okay. happy where my family is from I'm very um, close to it you know I, I, I love it so let's now transition into a deeper conversation was it love at first sight 
Do you believe in love at first sight? Do I believe in love at first sight? Don't look at him right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't look at him right now. <laughs> or is it like a built up to be like, all right, like. I don't damn. think it was like love at first sight for me. Um, I just felt right away, like on her first day, I was like, damn, I'm in trouble. Big time. <laughs> I said that straight up. I was like, I'm in trouble. Big time. I was like, this guy Looking talks. Looking at you up and down like, I'm in trouble. That's it. That's a wrap. This guy talks way more than me, and I love it. <laughs> um, because I just needed that person to just, I don't know, flow with me. You know, there's, there's just people in life, obviously, Rodrigo. There's just people in life you meet, and you're like, damn, like this guy's on my, my wavelength right now. Like, he, yeah. this guy's on the vibe. Like, I just, I felt it right Was away. there qualities that you were searching for, or is it just, like, he popped into your life, and you're just like, yo, like, I didn't even know I was looking for this, and this is what I needed? That one. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I wasn't, like, I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know I was searching for something specific. This guy just popped into my life and sh <laughs> <laughs> showed me, really, honestly, how, like, a woman should be treated, and someone who's excited about life someone who has so much drive i did not know i was looking for that in a partner someone who wasn't okay with being content someone who wasn't okay with just being complacent in life this guy wants more and more and more which made me want more and more and more and, and you know that saying like oh they make me want to be a better person like i thought that was so dumb until i met him and i was like cringy no, wow kidding. like no it is cringy but i was like <laughs> <laughs> I, w I always tell him this too I was like you literally are the definition of you make me want to be a better person I've never met someone so driven so focused on being better as a person and I was like damn like I'm trying to get like that it's levels like mm -hmm. I think if we go back to growing up right like everybody has that fairy tale and everybody has that like a uh, um aspiration like it has it's gonna be it's gonna go this route or not and then you graduate you get older you get you turn 21 whatever it is and the definition of being in love is literally oh how can I just better that partner and a lot of people and not this person reached out like two weeks ago and said had kids early on mm -hmm. and now we both messed up and now that guy doesn't let me work doesn't want me to go to work I was just like, what the fuck? What? Like, what are you doing? Save yourself right yes. now. Run away. Right. And my thing is, I always tell my girlfriend the same thing. Like, hey, like, we're trying. Mm -hmm. And we're not following the resume of everybody else's. Right. It's our own story. And I do believe when you meet certain people and they're doing something, you're just like, fuck, I got to do something yeah. so I can still sit at this table. Exactly. Like, the table we sit at now, like, everybody's doing something. So, right. and I always tell them, I was like, yo, because you guys are doing this, I need to keep going. Exactly. And I and to bring it back in, tie it back in with what you're saying about the relationship, that's just what it should be. Mm -hmm. Get a relationship that both of you are striving, right. getting better, pot, pushing each other for a better tomorrow, and not, hey, uh, you shouldn't do this. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, whatever the fuck you want to do, yeah. go and do it. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll support you. Right. As long as there's no disrespect, right? Yes. There's always that, like, level of respect when you're trying to do something, right? Yeah. So what was the challenge? For? You're always, right, when we get in love, you're just like, oh, rainbows, butterflies. Oh. And then, bam. Te cae la madre. I'm Look like, at him. Sorry, I just got to do this. No, I, I appreciate it. Like, I mean, you know. Reason, we, reason why, and I'm going to tell you the reason why I'm bringing this up, is because I see you guys' profile. I see you guys' stories. And it's always love, and right. it's, it's like, yo, like, these motherfuckers aren't love. <laughs> They're really so <laughs> happy. <laughs> and the trans, I just want the transparency. Transparency, because we're all not perfect. like that all the time, yeah, right? We're perfect, but we're not perfect. I'm all, we just got in a fight on the way over here. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, put, I opened the door I'm on the road. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, we all have challenges for sure. I think one of them, and I will... Like, I'll just put my stuff out there for sure. I feel like one of the challenges that we faced was a lot from my past. I felt like I was bringing a lot of my own baggage from, like, previous relationships. And even my own childhood trauma brought back into this relationship. 
And I didn't realize it until it was, there was yeah. some issues or, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I was going to therapy because I'm like, why am I like this? There is, there, there can't be just any reason. Like, why do I feel like, I can't trust men or something, or I can't put my whole faith into somebody and really believe what they're going to say because yeah. I've been let down like my whole life from just certain people in, in my childhood or, you know, certain like traumatic things that have happened or uh, toxic and disgusting relationships from before. There's just always something that I was holding and I brought it into the relationship. Unfortunately, it, it was not good. And so that's, that was another turning point. My turn point, what turn, back just, moment. turn back moment yeah. was like, okay, yeah, no, I can't, I can't hold on to these things anymore. It's, it's exhausting. Yeah. It's so exhausting to feel like you're trying to hold it together. And that's what I said. It'll turn, you know, piggyback to what I said. Do not ignore your depression. Don't ignore your sadness, your anxiety, because there's something there that's triggering it and you need to find out what is it. Yeah. Because Everybody deserves a chance, right? Like, I feel everybody does deserve that that first chance. Yeah. Until you fuck it up, then you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> you're out of here. No no questions asked, yeah. you're done. But it goes back to what we've been through. Yeah. It goes back to um, events, family, non-family, mm -hmm. relationships, to the point. And uh, one of the podcasts that we listen to, I listen to, is The Pivot. And Michael Beasley was just... This person got fucked by everybody, from mom to siblings to financial advisors, everybody. And one thing he said, and for some reason, I think what he just said just resonated. And he said, I'm tired. I'm tired of trying to find new and better relationships. I'm tired of putting trust into everybody and not getting anything back. Wow. So he was like, I'm done. Wow. So one of those things, and the reason why I'm saying that is... You went through your events, and you at like you acknowledged it at this point. You're how old? Twenty eight. Twenty eight. You acknowledged it. Twenty seven. Twenty six. Twenty six. You took twenty six years to acknowledge this. Yeah. How do you feel right now? Empowered. I feel like I'm finally in control. Like these. Ooh, here comes the tears, guys. Oof. <sighs> yep, this is what it is. This is exactly what it is. It's all right. This is a toast to life, and it's, I tell everybody it's life. We got to celebrate the wins, celebrate our losses. Yeah. I definitely feel like <clears throat> these things in my past – are no longer controlling, like, the way that I feel about myself, the way that I feel about relationships. Thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you, Dylan. <laughs> um, relationships, women. Crazy to think, like, a childhood experience that I had as a little girl could affect my view on women now. That's totally changed completely and 100% now that I feel like because I didn't ignore these feelings, I'm taking control now of the way that I look at just people in general. And I'm not perfect. I'm definitely not like 100% like the best ever. Obviously, I still have my weak points and my weak moments. But you are authentically you. But I'm authentically me and I'm authentically doing every single day, trying to be better, yeah. trying to overcome those demons. Literally. Yeah. You were, what's the figuratively, opening Pandora's box. Yeah. We're opening we're opening the door to these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> like like literally like and you know, just to join you on these tears, I might not cry, but like this is something that I've been battling since twenty twenty one. I lost my grandpa. At the end of twenty twenty one in it was like beginning of October. I think it was like what was it, like twenty days before my birthday, my best friend passed away. Yeah. And everything just goes. Yeah. And it's that, uh, like, she knows it, he knows it. And I'm like, fuck, man, I'm not good. Like, what's going on? I'm like, I'm just tired. Yeah. Why do I do this? It's, I lost my best friend to suicide. I'm like, 
<sighs> like everything I'm doing, and I couldn't even help the dude that was right there with me. My grandpa, same way. I'm like, fuck. If I had one more time, and I, I think I was telling her, I'd give all this shit up. Yeah. Give me two minutes. Give me January 25th back of 2021. Give me October 5th back mm. of 2021. Give me March 15th back of 2015. I'll give this shit up right away. For one minute. Wow. All I need is one fucking minute. Yeah. And... I sat back in. I give myself five minutes. I cry. I'm like, because I was calling her and I was crying. And then she was like, what are you doing? I was like, I just got to work. I got to go. <laughs> I got to get to work. Yeah. I give myself five minutes. So for anybody battling, whatever they're battling, right. give yourself a time limit. Give yourself three minutes. Give yourself yeah. five minutes. An hour. But once that time is done, you better get your fucking ass, ass up, up and you got to go. And you be a bad motherfucker. You got to go be a bad motherfucker. Why? Because there's people counting on you. Yeah. If you think it's easier to give up, hey, you're going to hurt more people by you leaving than you just, right? Like, yeah. you have parents, we have siblings, we got friends that really care about us. Yeah. Our loved ones, our significant others. There's literally people, and you may not know this, but after this podcast... When it comes out and fuck, I think uh, this one, the following one, once they listen to this, you're going to have people that are just like, yo, I listened to what you said and I thank you. People that you probably don't even have a close relationship and people are going to tell you, Gabby, because you said this, now I'm this. There's people watching you in the platforms you guys are both in and you don't even know the impact that you're making. The whole thing is giving you the flowers. Right. You did it. You're doing it. You're literally walking Thank testimony you. of of your story. Thank you for saying that. And some something just told me. I got to tell you. Thank you. I really, like you're I literally doing it. That. Like Thank you're you. literally doing it. Like it's tough. Yeah. Being parents, being entrepreneurs, right. being in being in life and, is, is yeah in life tough. <laughs> it's tough. Right. But the ones that were meant for this are here. Exactly. That's why you're there. Thank you. That's why you're with him. That's why he's in that same position and doing it. That's why these two are here because we're all fucking, we're, the bigger picture is endless. Yeah. There's one photo that we want to do and we want to accomplish, yo, but we have 10 missing pieces. We got to reach those motherfuckers yeah, there. Exactly. And it's literally, it's a, it's a grind. Yeah. People say, oh, everybody always says it. Oh, I'm on I'm the gonna, grind. I'm on the grind. I'm like, are you really? Are you really though? <laughs> are, you are you really on the grind? Like, what are you doing to better yourself? <laughs> exactly. That's that moment yeah. when you literally sit down, maybe today on a Sunday, you guys sit down. It's like, fuck. We did a lot during this week. And yeah. come we tomorrow, did. we start again. Yeah, we did. I just actually, speaking of, I'm going to shout out to all my six-week challenge girls. Yes. Go um, ahead. We're doing a six-week challenge for all these beautiful ladies who are trying to, like, better themselves. Um, so that's going on right now. I'm sure it's going to be going on still when this airs. So shout out to all you wonderful and beautiful women. We actually, Rodrigo is helping me to just, you know, figure out all that stuff this week. And we're even just saying like, damn, babe, like this week's been a week. Like we need to relax. We need to chill. So yeah. we feel you when you said that. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. That, that's why I tell Dylan on the way here. And we're just like, damn, bro, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> We've had a week. That's, and then yeah. we start pulling up. We're like. We're ready to go. Let's go. Let's grind it out. Let's work. Yeah. What do you feel is your purpose being a trainer right now? I feel like my purpose being a trainer is really getting to know these women and getting to know their struggles because I feel like, one, I can relate the, relate to them, but two, I feel like and I'm not putting myself on a, on a pedestal. It's like, if I could do this, like, you guys can do it. You know? I never would have thought in a, in a million years that I would be at the position that I was right now. Just from, you know, just the little lies that you tell yourself throughout the day, you know, throughout your life. Or people telling you you're not going to amount to anything. People telling you all these things that you want to hear. But I feel like my purpose right now is to show these women that... We're freaking bad motherfuckers, and we're able to do it all. Like, these women are 
beautiful and confident and even when they don't feel like they're best selves like I think I just I love implementing that self-love journey throughout every phase of your life whether maybe you're you know not feeling confident within your body you just had a baby and you're just you know a little overweight or whatever like have their self-love in that because you just made a baby like there's so many different levels to fitness like and so many different levels of your body. Women who just had a baby are so stressed about their body and so upset and just feeling like gross or, you know, maybe not as confident, but I, I want to remind them because I've been through it. And now that I see it, I'm like, you just had a baby. Enjoy. Yeah. Be, enjoy the bliss. Enjoy this moment with your baby because it's not going to be, your, your baby's not going to be a baby forever, right? The next season in life, you want to get fit. Enjoy that season. Enjoy that moment because you're a mom and you're working on yourself. Who freaking does that, you know? And then when you're finally at where you want to be in life, where, okay, I finally lost the baby weight. I finally did this. I finally did that. What next? What do you want to do next? Because the options are endless, right? Yeah, they are. Exactly. So that's kind of where I feel like my purpose in life for these women are, is just letting them to see, like, enjoy every process of motherhood, enjoy every process of your journey, enjoy every process of your fitness journey, because, like, time's fleeting, and yes, we're uncomfortable, but we have to enjoy life along with it. That's a fucking mic drop. <laughs> what the? F <laughs> Jesus, um, I was like, damn. Two. All right. If you tune in again this long, you got to make sure you're subscribing, you're sharing this podcast, following yes. it, post notifications on because mm -hmm. it's moving. Um, transitions in life. So you went from trainer to take the chance on yourself. Mom of two. You got your uh, six-week program coming out soon. Yes. What is your best advice on happiness? I didn't say life this time. I said happiness. Happiness. What's your definition of happiness? Doing what you love to do. I know, I think maybe Alan said that last last week, but it's it's true. Like, doing what you love to do and being unapologetic about it. Like, it is what it is. This is what I love to do. If you have a problem with it, like, sorry. Like, <laughs> Fuck. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, that's pretty, I mean, I don't know, man. It's, it's like, a I know it's that's a, tough a question, really yeah. tough question because there's so many like different avenues of happiness, I think. There is. There is. They, people get happiness by pleasing others, right. people get happiness by doing things for themselves, for others. Um, so it's endless. And definitely. endless, but I, so that's like my thing is just. Doing what you love to do and being unapologetic about it. That's just kind of what my motto has been. And I've been extremely, extremely happy. Why are you looking at Rodrigo? <laughs> <laughs> I've been extremely happy. Just, you know, just enjoying life and being able to work beside someone that I love so much. Um, that makes me happy. Just having both of us. I think recently, too, even like after my show we realized like damn like we're and you know of course this is not like um putting ourselves on a pedestal but really just focusing and dialing in on our work and being like damn like we're a force to be reckoned with if we really try it's and not a it's not on a co cocky level right this is a confident yes and notice that we only say this because yo we know what the fuck we're doing like, oh, we yeah. know what we've been through, what mm -hmm. we needed to do to get here. So when we say this, that we're some bad motherfucker, yo, yeah, it took a lot. Yeah. It took a lot to exactly. be here. Exactly. We, we both have the same type of, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Goals, but, like, we both kind of came from, Audition. like, the same background. Like, yeah. upbringing. Thank upbringing. you. Um, we both have the same type of upbringing. And so we know both of us have struggled immensely throughout our life. And now we're at a point where we're trying to do something about it. Like this is where we need to really be one confident in ourselves. Cause if we're not confident in ourselves, who the, f 
who the fuck is going to like be confident enough to trust us with their fitness journey or trust us with their own mental health not or something even, like not that. Not even that. To come back. Exactly. To stay in touch and yes. continue to talk to you guys and trust you guys. There's a lot of trainers. There's a lot of uh, athletes. There's a lot of, there's people in every industry and it's just populated. And what makes you different is who you are authentically. Exactly. Literally on the way here, it was, my boy Caesar was saying it. He said, people can come back to you because there's other people that are better than you, but they're not you. We can be imitated, but not duplicated. Wow. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Mic drop. <laughs> Let me say that one more Let me time. Say it one more time. <laughs> we can be imitated, but not duplicated. duplicated. That's literally why you're on. We got you on the podcast, and I'm very glad that you came to sit Thank in. Thank you. That is why Rodrigo's doing this thing. That is why me and Dylan are people are talking to us now and <laughs> finding us. And that's why Aubrey, you know, shout out for her new journey at new job at a big. Uh, we're not gonna say it, but there's a big school, big name. Ooh. So, but that's why we're here. Yeah. Because how you said it took a lot. Yes. We battled, we fought, we've <laughs> cried, we've mm. we've transitioned yeah. from being, for me, it was like being very petty and insecure, trying to fit in with society right. to, yo, I don't need to fit in anywhere. Exactly. I fit in with myself. I'm perfect. Yeah. Perfectly imperfect. Perfectly imperfect. And not only you're fitting in with yourself, but you fit in with your small circle of people that you have chosen to go far with you. I think yeah. that's the most important thing, too. Literally, one of our friends is coming from Oxnard. Coming from Oxnard oh, wow. to come. To come on the show. Uh, come kick it with us. Just, oh, wow. Yeah, we're going to go eat, go to the gym after. Oh, yeah. And it's just a vibe. Like, I think the group of friends that you don't always need to go out and get fucked up. You can literally, oh, yes. you can literally yeah. do positive shit. Right? Like, we go, go eat. Go work out. Yeah, we eat. go eat, work out. And by the time we leave, we're just like, yo, this is the perfect ending slash start to the week. Exactly. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it doesn't always have to be a party. Right. And there's always something you could do, like, to be or to better ourselves, right? Like, small circle of people, like, we're working all the time. Like, oh, dude, like, this would be sick. Like, this would be a sick angle. Or, hey, like, you know, macros and all this stuff. Like, yeah. it's it's always there for us because it's, like, the small circle that we have. We're just... We have the same goal, same mentality. I feel you on that, for sure. It's It takes a certain amount of people or certain people that can understand that journey, the process, the grind. Hey, you can't be out tonight because tomorrow you got to be up at 4 in the morning. Yes. Which is crazy because I'm fucking dead asleep at <laughs> 4 in the morning. But, like, uh, shout out Jose. Jose trains a client, I think, like, at 4 in the morning at Rancho. And, yeah, that guy's insane. Wow. Does a whole bender the night before and... The Damn. next morning, he's there. Just rallying it. He's real, yeah. I mean, he's what, 22, right? 22. He's still young. Yeah. He, he has a lot of energy in him. He has energy. Huh? Oh, that's 23. Yeah, yeah. So he trains at the South Made in Rancho Cucamonga. So he's there, and he transitioned the same way wow. from just being a power lifter, helping his homies, to training. Monetization. That's awesome. Good for him. So where are you trying to take your... Are you branding yourself? Did you brand yourself? Or are you just Gabriela? <sighs> That's still in the works. Um, I would like to brand myself, for sure. Brand my own business. Um, everything's kind of in li like limbo right now. I just finished my show. I just actually partnered up with an amazing trainer. Um, you guys had him on your podcast, AJ. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're actually business partners now. I've seen that. Um, so... I'm excited. I don't know what this next chapter holds, but I just know I'm wanting to grow a little bit more and, and we'll see, you know, what AJ and I decide to do. Um, as far as like other things, I know Rodrigo and I are trying to like get into business together too. Um, Can you do that? You think that's, um, I'm asking for the, for, for the people other people that, that so the, wonder. Yeah. So I feel like this is my thing. You get into business with somebody, right? Right. Why do you get into business with them? Because you trust them. You want to trust that they have what you're looking for in a partner as far as like pushing you to be better in your business to they have certain weakness or certain strengths that may be like your is your weakness, right? 
And I feel like as a couple, yes, like it's important to like separate the two, but it's the same thing. Like, oh shit, well, what if you guys break up? Like, oh shit, well, what if he does this to you? It's like, well, no, I'm, I'm choosing to trust him just the way that I choose to trust AJ because AJ has an amazing, amazing mindset when it comes to business. Yeah, he's just like... He's on it. Like, he's teaching me so much. So, I'm going in there with the choice to trust him. I'm going in here with the choice to trust Rodrigo. That, yes, he's my boyfriend, but he also has an amazing mindset when it comes to media, when it comes to editing, when it comes to all these certain things. And I feel like... Well, why is that any different from from a business standpoint? Like, I trust him with my business. Like, why go look somewhere else when literally, literally, the person of perfect that candidate is exactly right there. is right there. <laughs> and I'm also having the choice to trust him that we're gonna be okay in this relationship because it's it's an investment, correct? Yeah. I don't look at it as any different. Like, my, I'm telling you guys, this prep has really changed me. I'm just like, you gotta look at life as an investment every relationship that you're in like okay well and it's not to say what can they bring me right but that's that's not what i'm saying it's in a sense where like in certain situations like this where rodrigo yes is my boyfriend but like damn babe like we're a force to be reckoned with and we have a lot we can contribute to each other so why not put that trust in each other full 110 percent the way that i do it with aj does that make sense that makes total sense so that's how that works (laughs) <laughs> I love it. So honestly, I think the question is a perfect ending to this because we're at, I think like an hour, ten, hour, fifteen Sheesh. already. We can still go, but and, um, on a scale of one to ten, we haven't done this in a while. But on a scale of one to ten, financially, uh, mentally, emotionally, and physical, one meaning fuck you can't. That's it. It's a wrap, and ten is perfect. I'm not like. 7.5 right now. <laughs> I still have some way to go and I'm excited to get there cuz I'm on like fire right now. I have so much motivation, so much more to look forward to cuz I know I can be at a 10 soon. I know I can and I can see it finally. That's fucking dope. Thank you. I really really appreciate this. I'm excited to put this episode out. I'm excited for everybody listening to this one because what you did, again, I'm going to give you the flowers, but what you did right now and sharing everything you did from your hard points to your success to your downfalls to your, up, like, uplifts, it's going to help somebody. It yeah, might help so. one. It might help a hundred. But the ones listening in are going to see you in a whole different uh, lens that is just like, Wow. It's a bad motherfucker. It's a bad motherfucker right there. <laughs> but, huh? Yeah, now it's, now it's just different. Thank you, like, guys. I appreciate that. The For anybody that ever had, and I always say this, after every podcast, and in my head too, like, what we are here, we're the same outside. Yeah. You can tell, like, I might look serious in the gym, but you come up to me and talk to me, Yo, we'll have a great podcast conversation there. And people don't think, like, one of the dudes, shout out, hidden, hidden strength. But he was like, dude, like, I seen your pod. There is this. Started talking to me. Sp- spent, like, 15 minutes. Wow. I'm like, yo, like, hey, you do this? Like, oh, congratulations. Yeah. And someone yesterday was like, yo, you just have that energy. Like, I feel good after talking. I'm like, yo, like, it's not, it's not on a bad level. Like, why right. come in with a bad mindset? If yeah. I'm going to come in with a bad mindset, why show up? Right. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for allowing me to be on like this platform to just share my story. And thank you to just doing this. Like you really set yourself up to promise yourself, like, I want to do this. And you did it. And I literally was texting Alan yesterday. I was like, hey, bro, like, I just wanted to say thank you so much for sharing what you did. Like, it's it's not the people, just the people on here, but it's you giving the opportunity for these people to, like, share their stories and really reach a lot of people. So, pat on the back to you. I'm giving you the flowers, too, man. Like, thank you so much. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for just giving opportunities uh, for people to be, to be touched, honestly. I, I appreciate you. So, if you got your cafecito, if you got your tequila, if you got, if, <laughs> I hope you're not 
morning drinking on a Monday, but <laughs> if you are, you know, a toast. Toast. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Stay Thank tuned. You Make so sure much. you guys subscribe. Let's go. So people don't remember, and like Dylan was on at the beginning of the episodes, and we lived at the Colony at the Lakes. We're recording at 11 at night wow. to like 2, 3 in the morning, and we're uploading the next day. Like no one saw that. Mm -hmm. And I, w I told them, I was like, now people are seeing it. But I didn't know this was going to happen until now we're here. So I was talking, my mom's like, oh, like why are you doing this? Is it always the right gun securities? I'm like, yo, I don't, if we're doing this now, we're getting the recognition. Imagine in a year, year. one more year. Yeah, year. Two more That's years. That's crazy, dude. I was literally just having this conversation with Roger. I'm like, damn, like, we're just having the same conversations. <laughs> like, it's you planted the seed a year ago, right? And you're yeah. like, why the fuck isn't this growing? Like, sometimes you can get frustrated or sometimes maybe impatient, but it's like, no, you planted the seed already. Yeah. You're just waiting for it to grow. That's right? one thing I told Cindy, because Cindy's going through, like, her stuff with her business and everything. And I was like, me now thinking about it, like, it's those moments where everything's unsecure. Like, you don't see the return yet. You don't see the progress yet. Like, you're just like, fuck, maybe I should quit. Those are the times Those that... You cannot quit. Keep going. Yeah. Keep you just going. Gotta keep watering. That's like you watering it. Like right. Like, you plant the seed, whatever. Like, you think about behavior, right? Like, okay, I want to do this. Like, that's, like, plant the seed. And then it's like, we don't realize that we're watering every day. Every day. Every day we wake up. Putting in the work. Uh -huh. And then it, it's just at the end, like Dami said, like now we're, we're seeing it, like it's taking yeah. off. And you see a little spread. Really just the, and then it, this is just the beginning. Like we're just like, okay, now we're like coming off the roots and then it's right. like, uh, what's to come? Exactly. Yeah, because yeah. like. You should have said that on the freaking show. You turned it off. Kidding. Oh, it's rolling. Oh, it's rolling. <laughs> yeah. it's we, we got good at this. I always tell them, like, yeah. yo, like. You're smart. Yeah. I always tell them, I was like, yo, like, there's moments that we're going to have that. Are even better off the of camera and those are the moments you kind of have to get right. so um but just picking back off of just that like that part of again recognizing how far you came like mm -hmm. a year ago a year and a half like you didn't know this was going to be once you got into ufc right like yeah <laughs> you walked in you're like all right i'm gonna take a chance let's see where this goes and then bam yeah you guys are here i love that well, even for you guys, you know, I'm so, this is a really amazing Yeah, platform. if if we didn't continue and come to LA, like the reach with Alan, Jason, yourself, and the ones that are yet to be on here, like, like, it's just, yo, know, like, this awesome. is just. You guys are watering daily. Watering daily, it's gonna, it's gonna be great. Right. And I think yeah. it's getting crazier, like, well, well, the girl that I sent you, she's from San Francisco. So we're getting people that are, because I have my own podcast, so she um, found him, and I don't know if they, the guy that Oh like, yeah. Like he had a follower from San Fran say like, dude, like I'm tuning in from over here. He bought one of his shirts. Yeah. And then yesterday this girl was like, hey, I tuned into his podcast, found out you have a podcast, oh, yeah. and I've been binging your podcast, and you're like, you you yeah. changed me. Yeah. And yeah. I was wow. like, yeah, San Francisco, like that is crazy. There's a DJ coming from San Francisco. I think <laughs> this week coming. Wow. Like uh, you just think, I mean, like yeah. it's that's just California, but yeah, that's seven hours away. You know, yeah. like. Yeah, it's it's wild, wild because yeah. like we have I'm telling you, I think the biggest reach is because of TikTok. So the one from San Francisco reached the TikTok video, uh -huh. and it was he was going through a breakup, mm -hmm. and literally messaged me on IG and I saw the request. So I literally mid workout at ten o'clock, like we're sending voice messages back, wow. and I'm just like talking back and forth. And I tell everybody I'm like, yo, I I always interact with everybody. Right. Like no matter who I am, what I like, what how big we are, blue check, no check. It's still the conversation. Mm -hmm. Why? Because even if we get a blue check mark, like, I'm not forgetting where we started. And yeah. I'm always going to talk about the apartment, the house, and then now here. Because right. we're like, dude, you're out there. You're doing it. I'm like, yeah, man, it's the grind, though. Like, this is what we need to yeah. be doing regardless. Perfect. Whatever price we got to pay, whatever, whatever mode, like, we you're have investing. to do this. Right. Yeah. yeah. So there's other people doing podcasts from my city. 
And my thing is like, yo, keep going. Mm-hmm. Like you're in your own own lane. I'm in my own lane. Yeah. You're not gonna compete and with you're me. You're doing the same thing, but it's yeah. Focus the the laser focus on yeah. you, right? We're on yeah. victory lap. Oh, yeah. We're on victory awesome. lap. Alright, ready for the thumbnail? Yes, sir.